Hey, 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 hey. Um, I'm back. Uh, yay, it's We Are But Men Monday. Um, that's not a thing, but I'm trying to make it a thing because I try to make things things when I shouldn't make things things. I'm just talking already and I'm off to a bad start, but here we go. Um, this is episode two of Please Be My Friend. Uh, I had an opportunity to sit down and talk to Brian Knatzer. He is the owner and operator and head brewer uh, for the Sleepy Owl Brewery in Kingsport, Tennessee. <clears throat> I'm also sick. Uh, that's the thing that's happening, so you're going to have to deal with uh, listening to me cough uh, throughout uh, the recording. Um, it's it's uh, I have had the opportunity to host a beer and comedy show at Sleepy Owl Brewery uh, for a year now. Uh, beer and comedy was a it's 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 not like a brand new concept, but the concept of uh, doing a show called Beer and Comedy it started with uh, Joe Pettis. He's a comedian out of uh, out of Atlanta. He's a friend of mine, and he does one at Sweetwater Brewery. And I randomly I talk about it in this. Uh, this episode with uh, Brian about how I randomly found his brewery, and uh, when I randomly went there, I, I the next I had such a good time that that night I immediately went home and messaged him, and I was like, "Hey, I'm a comedian. I would love to do something at your venue. It's gorgeous. Your beers are awesome. It'd be a lot of fun." He got back to me, and uh, we set something up almost immediately, and it's been going for a year now. Uh, so that's just another branch of the the beer and comedy. Uh, like, like franchise for a new or another franchise of beer and comedy, um, and it's in Sleepy Owl Brewery. But I've 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 been very fortunate uh, to to get to know Brian uh, over the course of the year, and uh, it's he has an interesting, fun story about how he got to become uh, a brewer uh, from someone who has such a a fun like a, a different like uh, technology background. Uh, he talks about that his background in this, um, and to make that jump into uh, owning a brewery uh, is pretty fascinating. So I really wanted to talk to him uh, since he's been such a cool venue, uh, such a cool guy uh, for the past year while I've been doing beer and comedy shows. <clears throat> so I'm sorry that you have to listen to me, uh, you know, hack up a lung. I've been sick for like a week now, um, but I've been doing shows and drinking at those shows because I'm an idiot. Uh, I don't take care of myself. I really should learn to take better care of myself. I'm like 31 years old and I'm going to die soon. Uh, but because I'm dumb and I'm sick and I'm constantly drinking at shows. But, you know, they pay you in drinks. So if you don't drink, it's like you're not getting paid. So you have to drink to get paid, right? That's that's sound logic, surely. Right? Right? No? Okay. Um, as for my shows, uh, I've got a couple of shows coming up, uh, this week. I, what, uh, the Tuesday, Tuesday, what, Tuesday, September 29th, I'm in Johnson City, uh, as part of a vaudeville type show for the Secrets Society at the Willow Tree in Johnson City, uh, so if you hear this, uh, tonight and you happen to live in the Tri-Cities and you feel like going uh, tomorrow to go see that show, uh, that'd be absolutely cool. And then uh, this uh, Saturday, I'm uh, covering the Kingsport Oktoberfest. Uh, tickets are still available for that if you guys want to go. I'll be there uh, running around uh, filming stuff and interviewing people. And then after that, I'll be in, uh, in Kingsport covering the NWA Smoky Mountain wrestling show as one of the commentators that's a new thing that i do i'm a commentator for nwa smoky mountain so come out and check out that show there's uh the the nwa world heavyweight champion is wrestling that night he's wrestling a good friend of mine um named travis lee so if you're in the area and you again are hearing this before then you should totally come out and check out uh, my show tuesday uh, at the willow tree september 29th and then october 3rd uh october fest and uh uh, NWA Smoky Mountain. Uh, only one stand-up show this week, but I'm doing a bunch of different random things this week. So, uh, yeah. <clears throat> um, uh, no sponsor for this week, but, however, uh, if you're listening to us on Podbean, uh, that's wearebutmen.podbean.com. 
right up there on the top of the page there's a little green button that says become a patron you click that you throw us a couple of bucks um you get to continue listening to the podcast um it again it will accept anything like we'll accept a dollar it doesn't matter to us it's cool um and you can continue to hear uh some of our fun uh podcasts we're gonna have uh episodes of two guys a girl and a wrestling podcast those are gonna be coming back and we also have season two of my tv stories starting up soon um probably next week i'm pretty sure you're gonna hear a new episode of my tv stories next week so yes uh brian knatzer sleepy owl brewery uh i had a great time talking to him i hope you guys enjoy that uh and give it a listen so yeah please be my friend episode two brian knatzer do the damn thing drinking water while I'm interviewing the beer guy because <laughs> I'm Thanks. classic yeah uh, I, I'm here with uh, Brian Knatzer it's Knatzer yes, I'm going to start right there with that that's uh, yeah. where that's rare. where does that name do you know where that name comes from that is Irish it's Irish yes. okay because I've literally never heard that name before until I met you well, it's uh both sets of my grandparents came over from Ireland mm-hmm. and my family settled in Sevierville Gatlinburg area. Mm-hmm. So if you look in the Sevier County phone book, there's hundreds of <laughs> a thousand Knatzers. Jesus. My great grandfather moved up here in the early 20s. Mm-hmm. And he had one son, which was my grandfather, had one son, my dad, and me. So there was always just one here, and then I've got two boys. So. Okay. But well, we're the only Canats are still in this area. No, see, because I, I, I didn't, I, I literally, I had no idea where the name was from. I was like, that is an interesting yeah. name. Um, a lot of people think it's German, but it, it is, it is. Irish. It sounds German. Yeah. It sounds German. I see. I'm British. My grandmother was born and raised in oh, England, yeah. and she came over here. One of my uncles was literally born over there before they, wow. before they came over. So, uh, 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 names always intrigue me. I found out that I'm apparently related to like. Kings and like the like <laughs> Frankish kings. Mm-hmm. One of them, I'm, I'm related to a king named Rathberius. Oh wow! Which is like the most badass name I've ever heard in my life. He was probably a pussy, <laughs> but his name sounded awesome. Um, <laughs> just so you, so you grew up in this area? I did. I uh, grew up in Blountville. Blountville. I was a Navy brat. Remember, okay. Uh, but by the time I was four or five, you know, we were settled in Blountville. So most of my life lived in Blountville then and in Bristol too, but it's always been Northeast Tennessee. Okay, so you did you so you popped around basically just in this area. Yeah, yeah, and then after college, uh, we did a little bit of traveling. We lived in Nashville for a while. And okay, worked out of the area a lot, but we've always just came back here. Where'd you go to college? ETSU. ETSU. Nice. Hey, yeah. alum. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Um, go Bucks. God bless them. Go yeah. Bucks. <laughs> And uh, since you're a brewer, I'm going to ask this question. When was the first drink you ever had? Can you remember? Oh, my God. Well, considering I was a Navy brat, I probably don't remember. But was, <laughs> uh, I'd say my first official drink was probably freshman, sophomore year in high school. Okay. kind of, I remember we had a, a friend that uh, had an older brother who would go out and get beers, and, they, and everybody would be standing around with their, do- their $10 bill saying, you know, give me Bud Light, give me natural light, or whatever. And he'd go, fuck that. You ever give your money? I'm going to buy as much natural light and Keystone as I can. <laughs> and the faster you drink it, the more you get. Mm-hmm. And I was always able to drink a lot of it. So. Yeah, with the you know with the Irish roots and all, I feel like that yes. that helped a little bit. No, I I remember my first uh, my first drink that I ever had was always a kid. I think I was about four or five, mm-hmm. and uh, my grandfather had a bo- like a glass of whiskey, just whiskey, <laughs> and I. It was tired. I'd been out running around, and I came inside and thought it was my glass of Coke, and it surely wasn't. Um, and I remember being like, what in the name of fuck is this? <laughs> and uh, it was many more moons before I drank again. I think I got drank on, drunk on vodka. Oh, my God. Like, the, like a week before my junior year of high uh, school started. Of course, with the Irish background and the, the family and Maggie Valley and Sevierville and all that, there was... Plenty of uh, untaxed liquor going around. 
anytime I had a cold, you know, it was homemade rock and rye with yeah. rock candy and moonshine. Yeah, I uh, I don't have I I've got a cold right now, so I'm on a steady diet of Dayquil and Nyquil. Like I've set an alarm so that every four hours it goes off, I'm taking another shot. Woo of cough syrup. <laughs> um, and I feel like it's worse because I've just been drinking all week too, because I've had a bunch of shows. So I've been going and doing shows and then drinking. So I feel like that's why I'm still sick because I'm just uh, continuing to drink alcohol. <laughs> but uh, that's the, the the genius of me. Um, so you went to school, ETSU. Mm-hmm. What'd you uh, What'd you major in? My uh, BS was in digital media. This was back in the uh, early '90s when ETSU first got the digital media program, where it was my own 3ds Max, and you know, we were having whole graduating classes move out to San Diego and Boulder, Colorado to work for Sony and Naughty Dog and Sigil. And mm-hmm. I got more into the web and multimedia side of it because my dad was a programmer in the Navy and I had a pretty heavy programming background. Mm-hmm. And then I went right into grad school and my master's was in business management and digital media. Uh, so it was definitely all, all around programming and animation and things like that. And I spent... 20 years as a programmer doing that. Okay. Uh, At what point in that did you go, hey, you know what would be cool? Beer. <laughs> <laughs> I'd been a home brewer for close to 10 years, and uh, this was three years ago, and the biggest thing was uh, my mother passed away in 2011, and I had been spending you know, the last 17, 18 years at a desk, working at a computer, with teams in Kiev, teams in San Francisco, and just working for somebody else, working mm-hmm. 18 hours a day, sitting on my ass, not getting to see my kids and everything. So my mother passed away. I'm like, you know, there's life short. There's a lot, a lot of stuff to do. I want to do something with my hands. Craft beer was exploding then at the point we we started working on this. Uh, there was Depot, Wolf Hills, and Studio Brew. So we were the fourth brewery. And within a year and a half, there are now 13. So we in, the, in the Tri Cities area, just, in, the, just yeah. in the Tri Cities, or Southwest Virginia, Northeast Tennessee, yeah. you know, this this side of, of Asheville, and uh, it's kind of just a good time to get into it because it's it's got its marketing built into it. You know, people already know a lot about. It. They're searching out this yeah. kind of industry, and uh, just saw a way for me to do something to start a business that I could hand down to my kids, that I could be my own boss, drink a lot of free beer, <laughs> uh, have a lot of good music, yeah. Going. What what made you uh, want to brew your your first home brew? What was that adventure like? I think with like a lot of people, one making it yourself, and two getting as much alcohol in it as you possibly can. <laughs> Especially in Tennessee, you you know it's you can go to liquor stores and buy stuff, but it's it's tough to find good high high gravity alcohol. Uh, and with a brewer like with brewery here, I can't make it. Yeah, but as a home brewer, you can. There is no limit, and so that was one of the things was making a stout that. You know, it was nine ten percent making a double IPA that was eight or nine percent, and then really just it's just like cooking. I love I love to cook. I'm definitely not a chef. I'm a cook, and uh, just trying different ingredients and trying stuff that doesn't taste like anything else. Did you have any mishaps when you were first oh, starting? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think we're still finding hops in the stove at house where, <laughs> where I have boil boil overs. So <laughs> you have the the, the idea. Uh, to jump from home brewer to actual brewery, what was that process like? That was a pain in the ass. That was, uh, you know, from what I understand, it's gotten better. But it took us a good three to four months to apply. Um, federal was a pain because this, when I applied, this was right after the government shut down, and they were in no hurry to do it. And they were so backed up because this one office approves labels, approves recipes, approves licenses. So they were just completely backed up. And it was almost three months to the day from when we applied to when we got our license. And uh, But other than that, I mean, where I was a programmer, I was working out of uh, Boston, Golden, Colorado, and, and San Jose. The salary was good, so I was spending a lot of my savings, a lot of my side money t- to build this. And we're three months into building it we've got all the equipment built we've just got a lot of little things left to do and me along with six other colleagues out of the Boston group got let go it was just no sales lost a couple accounts and they were like you know 
The remote guys are gone. So instantly, from good salary to no salary. Mm -hmm. And so we sat back and thought, well, do we need to uh, just pack it up and move where we know it's a guaranteed job, like Atlanta or Nashville or some larger city, or just kind of buckle down and do it? We did the Kickstarter. We had 200 people back us. Uh, was able to get over the hump, get everything open, get everything done. We've stayed in the black since day one. We've stayed cash only since day one. Nice. Um, everything we've ever bought, we just put in a four barrel system, paid cash for it. I uh, had a couple uh, investors that really believed in us, so uh, been able to do it without jumping in, you know, half a million to a million dollars and massive renovations and stuff. So, and we have had some downtime during the winter. You know it. Depending on a tap room, we had downtime. So it's that's when you kind of look back and think of the cash way is, is nice. Yeah, it's, no, I this winter was wretched here because mm -hmm. I, I, I host the beer and comedy show here, and mm -hmm. the winter uh, was terrible for us yeah. because what was it? Was it like negative yeah. sixteen here and like an a act of God ice storm yeah. hit? We had a foot of snow <coughs> in the parking lot for two weeks straight. Yeah, because nobody uh, cleaned. No, no, yeah, that's. Uh, yep. Yep. No, I heard about you all uh, from the Kickstarter. Somebody had shared the Kickstarter on Facebook, and I remember looking at it and being like, "That'd be cool if I had money to give you all." Um, and then I uh, graduated college and moved home, like all great college graduates do. And uh, I was sitting in Gate City, and if you know anything about Gate City, there's mm -hmm. absolutely nothing to do in Gate City. And it was a Friday night, and I was like, wasn't there a brewery in Kingsport? I remember seeing a thing, and I looked it up and uh, found Sleepy Owl Brewery, and uh, it said, like, the beers they had on tap, one of them was a Hefe. Hefe's are my favorite type of beer ever. So I jumped in the car because it was like, we close at 9. <laughs> and I, like, sped over here, got here at, like, 8.50 to get this beer, and I walked in, and it was like, yeah, we don't close at 9. We close at, like, 11. It's like, because there was a band here and everything, and I was like, well, all right, then. Um, Stay and drink more. Yeah, so I, I definitely did. I had a great time. You, you know how, like, you run into people from high school, and you don't want to run into people from high school? <laughs> yeah. And, like, because it's always the people you don't want to see. But for some reason on that one night, it was, like, everybody that I actually wanted to see from high school. Oh, nice, nice. So I, I lucked into that. So I've had, I've had a great experience here. Awesome. Uh, since then and then we just started doing the mm -hmm. beer and comedy like a month or two after that when when in the in the process of like we're gonna do a beers and uh when were you like we have to have music music has to happen well i mean it's we have always and we'll always give credit to Woolfields because they kind of started the whole brewery tap room with live music mm -hmm. thing and um Especially when they first came out, because it was needed to get people into the tap room. Yeah, um, you know you you can have two different kinds of breweries, and some try to blend the two. But we're more of a tap room. Come here to drink our beer. Very rarely does our beer go out to restaurants. Yeah, uh, Wolf Hills they have beer going out to restaurants, but they're in Abingdon, so you know there's not a ton of restaurants that serve beer there. So Bristol and John City and Kingsport, and they needed a way to get more people to come to the tap room because honestly margin's better you come buy a pint here because we, we make much more money than selling a cake to distribute to a restaurant where the yeah. restaurant sells it for what we would sell it for so Wolf Hill started and I had been going up there since they were in the back of southern states filling growlers I mean I've been up and I've followed them I know the brewer I know the, I a bunch of the guys really well and knew it would work and um uh, knew that we had enough distance between us because Wolf, Wolf Hills is a good 45, 50 minutes away. Yeah. And we wouldn't worry about having to pull a clientele from them. I mean, we even serve Wolf Hills beer on our tap. So uh, we knew that was the way to get people in here. And in this area, try to not say it in a bad way, but they're, they're known for a certain genre of music and they rarely strayed from that. Mm -hmm. And you would have to go to Johnson City to get the good Americana folk blues punk and so that's why we started doing that we don't do any cover bands uh we actually just had our first hip-hop show in here saturday night and it was packed nice uh, we've had black metal we've had punk americana blues just a, a really good range to try to bring more people in and even introduce people that think you know they've never heard of a band called carrie nation and speakeasy 
But once they come and see them, they're like, holy shit, these guys are like a, a punk bluegrass band. Yeah. And they, they play traditional bluegrass instruments, but they're they're loud and they're kind of rocking it. Uh, it has proven, I mean, even on nights that we don't do that until late, we know that's what draws people out. Because we don't have food. We do have food trucks, but they leave pretty early. And we need a way to get people in here to stay and drink beer. And another reason is why we don't we do not do cover charges. We tried it. And, you know, we tried to do cover charges, and it pissed off a lot of people. And for some reason, they don't like paying to, to hear music and yeah so it's a bit more beneficial for me as a brewery to pay bands guarantees and tips and have people come and listen to them for free and buy beer yeah uh, so there's there's been a lot of learning over the last year year and a half what uh, what kind of music do you like no, I like it all huh? I would say more than anything the punk grass uh, like the carry nation the um uh, heavy blues like Jake and the Comic Conductors, uh, more uh, instrumental type okay. music. But I listen to anything. Yeah, I know that. Uh, I, n- I remember we we bonded over the fact that uh, citizen we like Citizen Cope. Oh yeah, like you were yeah. playing Citizen Cope. I was like is that Citizen Cope? And you were like, you know Citizen Cope? Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a it's not a big uh, yeah. group of people that can recognize Citizen Cope yeah. just by listening. Yeah, to yeah. I mean that's that's a good genre because it's indie. And, yeah, you know, Cope was he bought his own. Uh, he bought his rights back from his label so he could go into and he in return he never really made it huge but I like that about it and I like the, the smaller ones that have before they've made it big you know they're they're not out playing massive venues but one day they may but most of them could care less about doing that they like the small venues and playing every night so you got a lot of tattoos uh, <laughs> that's a thing uh, y'all can't see it but uh, wh- where did your love uh, for ink come from Again, it was uh, my dad was Navy, so he had a lot of tattoos, and uh, I've just always liked art and uh, been real picky about my artists. So most of my tattoos come from Columbus, Ohio, so I drive to get them. Not that there there are great tattoo artists right here, and I found them after I found my my artists, but uh, and they all have meanings. I mean, this one on my right arm is it's roses, rubies, and crystals, and that's the the symbols for a fifteenth wedding anniversary. Okay. I got it when my wife and I had our fifteenth anniversary. The script on my my right arm and forearm it says Canadzer 1947. My dad was born in 47. He passed away in 96. So 47 is kind of a lucky number for me. Okay. And the other one's a full sleeve, two warriors fighting an octopus, which means it's my two sons could fight anything and, and take it on. So nice. <coughs> and, and tattoos are very addictive. That's oh yeah, the, that's, that's the big thing. I can I can attest to that. No, because I I was my plan was to get the seven deadly sins. And then I got three of them, and then was like, "But I kind of want other stuff now." So then yeah, I just started yeah. getting other stuff. Yeah, um, I'm I'm bad for uh, what's it called? Not seeing things through to the end. Um, <laughs> and they're not cheap. I mean, no, and, no, and, and they hurt. A it's lot. a it's an addictive and expensive habit to have. It's like buying art that you can never really sell. Yeah, um, unless you're like a like one of those models. I can, I, I can see you being yeah. you'd be an adorable pinup model, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, um, <laughs> what pale Irish skin? <laughs> no flash. You can't yeah. have flash <laughs> at all. Skin the blonde sun. everyone. Um, what uh, what's what and what does the future hold for for Sleepy Owl Brewery? You know, it's it evolves always. We when we first opened, we thought. Yeah, let's let's work towards a 10, 15 barrel brewery. Let's work towards heavy distribution. But as we've seen over the past six months with all the breweries popping up, I mean, there's several in Johnson City now, several in Bristol, more coming, and most of them are getting 7, 10, 15 barrel breweries. And their main goal is to distribute and get out there. Well, I'm content with having the tap room. We've got a great location downtown. We're getting a city park put directly beside our building mm-hmm. for 2017's Kingsport Centennial um, and it'll be it's got a stage built into it it's got water features for kids to play in so we we're kind of in a sweet spot right now that you know we're we've got a tap room with a lot of good music and we've got a good flow of people coming through but we learned from last year once it starts getting colder we need to concentrate on distribution so it, instead of going and borrowing a ton of money and, and moving up to 10 or 15 barrel we paid cash for a four barrel system which quadruples our output can get us into restaurants can get us into local stuff and we're going to be picky you know I'd, 
Martin of Stir Fry and 620 Pork on label. You know, restaurants like that are, are ones we want to get into. You know, Macadoo's, all the local King Sport. Yeah. And anything in really Sullivan County because we can hand distribute. In Sullivan yeah. County. We don't have to go through a distributor. But we're not about going out and being in every restaurant, every chain, every trying to take taps over from a lot of people. We we just want to be able to, you know, move along. We've got two full time employees now, keep them paid, grow slow and ride the wave. Yeah. Um, it, it's easy to get in deep and owe the man and then when a shitty month comes along you can't pay the man. And, oh yeah, it's better to, to take it slow and because my, my I've noticed that when a lot of places they'll be small and then when they go bigger to try to distribute it it's they there's quality control yep. problems yep. Yep. like you it, it will taste different from restaurant to restaurant yep. and like there was uh, I won't say the name of it but there was one where it would taste different from bottle to bottle in the same six pack um, and so, so I, I, I like it's better to, I guess, it's like Pals. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like yeah, Pals exactly. refuses to let its its yeah. uh, franchise go out farther yeah. than a certain area because they can't control yeah. the quality of the of the product. Yeah. Well, that, that's funny you brought it up because um, when I was in grad school, I took an entrepreneurship class, and Pal Barger came and spoke to it. And this was in 2000, at the very beginning of 2000. And he told us the reason. He said, oh, I, I don't franchise. I own every one of them. We grow slow. We we don't want to be in every city and every state. We want to keep quality perfect. We, we don't QA. I mean, you drive through Pals, you know, they're all clean. They all uh, went through one in Blomwell the other day that um, did not need paint, but they're out touching it up just to make sure it looks pristine. They, they're all the uniform. It's just You can just tell they're about quality and taking care of their customers. Yeah. And it's, it's the same thing here. I've, I've never forgotten that. And we, we want to make sure... We pour in glass because it's about the experience. You know, we don't like pouring in plastic. We um, try to keep a full range of, of menus from a stout to a half aid to a blonde where anybody can come in. We even have cider so people can come in here and, and enjoy it. Yeah. And we, we give free samples so when people uh, don't really know what they want, they can try it. And sometimes people try all eight and don't like any of them. And they're like, you know, hey, sorry. And I'm like, hey, man, it's fine. Man. Everybody but, has uh, different tastes yeah, in beers. Yeah, but it's... I think growing slow, and when you expand, you can't just add a bigger system. You have to upgrade pumps. You have to upgrade your whole cleaning regimen. I mean, there's a lot of steps to get bigger. <laughs> and we've been able to, when we move from one to four barrel, we're able to reuse some of the equipment, buy some of the equipment, and everything we've always bought, we can always sell the smaller stuff because it's all stainless, and we can sell it for almost as much as we paid for it. Yeah. Um, and we only use the best ingredients. I buy malt from Asheville, from Riverbend uh, Malt House. It's all organic. Most of our other malts from uh, Europe, which is all GMO-free and organic, and I can tell. On some of the times I've switched up grains, you can tell the taste difference. I want consistency. Yeah. I guess that's, that's important, because especially with beer, people come to expect a certain... Uh, it's like when, when Coke changed their formula and everybody got super pissed yeah, off. Yeah, new uh, Coke. Yeah. New Coke was terrible, and they went right back to uh, Coca-Cola Classic. Yep, yep. Um, so, yeah, it, it's it, your audience expects a certain amount of uh, consistency. And the good thing about still being small is we don't have major, major investors breathing down our throat to do one thing or the other. Yeah. And I, I have the final word, and if people don't like it, you know, it's, it's our decision. Yeah. So, Sleepy Owl, where did the name come from? <laughs> so, uh, we have a cabin up in the Smokies, and... Um, kind of car I drive they only can service it in Knoxville it's an Audi and uh, I always when I have a, I get a service I get an early appointment I go stay in the cabin so it's a short drive from Sevierville to West Knoxville so mm-hmm. it's like a 30 minute drive and uh, so one morning two it was about two years ago I was driving down this back road towards Seymour Tennessee which is behind Alcoa coming into West Knoxville and I saw what I thought was a river rock sitting in the middle of the road so I went by it, and I was like, well, something, you know, that, that's a big-ass rock. If somebody, this is high school kids driving through in the morning, if somebody hit that, they could tear some shit up, they could wreck water. So I turned around and went back, and I was going to move the rock. When I got out of the car, walked up to it, it was an eastern screech owl, <laughs> sitting in the middle of the road. And I immediately kind of stepped back because I saw its talons and stuff. And so I walked over and got a, a stick and 
nudged it off the road. And when I touched him to move him off the road, he, his head turned and looked at me and his eyes were closed. <laughs> so I got him off the side of the road, got him set up or whatever, and left, came back and he was gone. So and I told many, many bird lovers and bird watchers about what happened. They said, well, one, it probably had been hit by a truck and had been stunned and, you know, had been blinded or whatever. Or it was hunting all night and it got so tired it just stopped where it was. <laughs> Whatever way, there was a owl with its eyes closed in the middle of the road side that I moved. And I put on Instagram and said, look at this sleepy feller I helped off the road this morning. My wife went, ah, you know, there's the mascot, there's the logo, there's the name, Sleepy Owl Brewery. And I was like, yeah, cool. Nice. And what's funny is this this coming Thursday, the, uh, October second, we have a, a band called the Blind Owl Band, <laughs> and they're a punk grass band from Upper New York. And same thing, they actually hit an owl, and then it was it was a blind owl that they stopped and helped off the road after they hit it. So, bringing people together, yes, with beer and music and and raptors. <laughs> <laughs> um. Let's see, we've talked about where you grew up and how you got into this. And What's your favorite type of beer? I like IPAs, but um, my favorite are Belgians. I like Belgian triples, Belgian quads. Um, most of my trips to Asheville, I always go to Pisgah Brewing. They have one of the best Belgian triples around. It's kind of, uh, they're always pretty hot. They're, you know, they're 8 to 10%. Um, fairly hoppy um, but it's always a smooth drinking beer so I like Saison's triple oh I love Saison's yeah, that's a Belgian style beer is probably my favorite I think Pisco was the first place I'd ever had that did a blueberry I think it was at, wow. it was at uh, Thirsty Orange and it was like Pisco blueberry wow. something or other and I like I was like this is the best thing in the yeah. world yeah. I like my fruity gay beers uh, I can't help that I don't like. I'm not a big fan of IPAs because mm-hmm. it just it just tastes like a pine cone. <laughs> That's the way it's, it's always been that way for me. I don't know yeah. what it is. Yeah. But uh, I don't. I don't. <clears throat> I do like Belgian like wheat beers. Those are mm-hmm. good. Um, I like light stuff, which is weird. I like I like super light stuff, and then I like super dark stuff. I love stouts. Mm-hmm. Like y'all stout. Uh, was it the Heatherine? Yes. I love the Heatherine. That's got an interesting story behind it right yeah yeah it was uh i said my dad passed away in 96 and i've been dating my wife my girlfriend time my wife for a few years and uh um there was this they they used to pick on each other all the time and uh, he worked in telford tennessee and his middle name was mayford which is the mayford's appalachian ipa that i have Mm -hmm. And he hated the name, and she would always pick on him and call him Mayferoni, the terrific treat. <laughs> and it just pissed him off. So uh, one day, that song, Glycerine, from Bush came on back in the 90s, and he started singing Heatherine <laughs> just to piss her off. And, and little, you know, She loved the song, so she kind of liked it. So it just kind of stuck. And he always called her Heatherine from then on to the day he died. So. Nice. I've uh, I used the the heatherine stout to make a cupcake at, oh, uh, right. at my family's bakery. Yeah. A chocolate stout cupcake with a cooked caramel icing on top mm. of it. Pretty fucking fantastic. Yeah, the stout and the Irish red are two of the most popular beers here. And that's the cutthroat, yes. which is named after the band. Yep, cutthroat shamrock. Yeah. We I'm had still, them in here. That's about a year ago. It was the for Oktoberfest yeah. free party. I'm still trying to get my name up on the board in some kind of fancy way. Well, you know, I did do the Hunter Red Wheat. Yeah. I, I was saying the, the Hefeweizen should be called the yeah. Hefeweizen. That's, <laughs> that's, <laughs> yeah, because we got the, the Night Hunter Red Wheat. Yeah, that shit was good. It's, um, it's thick poured well. And yeah. that's another thing. we doing small batches. We're able to, I mean, we've got 26 recipes now that we just rotate through. And uh, it kind of hard to keep consistent because if I don't brew one for a couple months, I kind of forget what it tastes like. Yeah. Which in a way is good too because if it does taste different you know, unless someone's a hardcore fan of that beer they're not going to notice. Yeah. So. I, uh, I, I, I like the uh, the lemongrass wheat. I was, I was a big fan of that yeah. one. That was a, I was a particular fan. I drank that one. That was all summer last year. Yeah. I drank that one all summer from you all. And the biggest one, the, the wheat beer, we did the summer heffy. And pushed it through a, a filter of organic pineapple. Oh and yeah, that that was insane. Cause we we did that and we let it sit overnight and came in and that next day, 
I poured the pineapple out on the, the bar and people were just, just rabid. And they went crazy about it because it was carbonated alcoholic pineapple juice. <laughs> that sounds magical. Now I'm going to need to drink some more, and which is going to be great because I'm sick already and it's just going to compound <laughs> it on top of it. Um, so yeah, we've uh, we've talked about your upbringing, your history, your future, and uh, everything, I guess, and your music, and your tattoos, and your family, and your beers, and so I got, I guess I got one, one question left. Brian Knatzer, will you please be my friend? Oh, absolutely. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you guys have a chance and you're in Kingsport, Tennessee, make sure to, to come down to, to Sleepy Hour Brewery. Check out Brian. He's here uh, most every single day. Uh, pumping out some great beer and uh, having some great music. Also some great comedy every other Tuesday. Uh, Self-promotion there that I host the beer and comedy shows here. Uh, thank you very much, Brian. Thank you. Good okay. times. Great holidays. Yeah, so that was my conversation with Brian Knatzer of Sleepy Owl Brewery. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, uh, I forgot to mention uh, in the opening... Uh, there's another big show that I've got coming up. It's October 6th. It's at Sleepy Owl Brewery. It's our beer and comedy show that I was talking about. It's our only show there um, for the month of October. Um, and it's Ladies Night. Woo! Um, it's it, Well, I really only called it that because it just kind of happened to fall uh, in, in that way. We had Kendra Corey. She was supposed to do a show for us, um, our back-to-school show. Um, but she got sick and couldn't make it, so I finally got to rebook her. So she's coming, and also Liz Brooks and Ricky Higgins out of Knoxville and Tara White out of Kingsport are performing. So it just so happened that I had um, a bunch of uh, hilarious female com comics on one show. Um, so I decided to call it Ladies Night, and since it's October, I decided that we are going to be taking donations for uh, the Keep a Breast Foundation um, to you know because it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So I uh, wanted to do something. For that, since it's our one show in October, I wanted to do it up big. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, sorry that you all had to listen to me be uh, coffee and sick and gross through the whole podcast. But, uh, yeah, thank you guys very much for listening. Uh, again, the Secret Society on Tuesday the 29th, uh, Oktoberfest on the 3rd, also the NWA Smoky Mountain Show on the 3rd at the Kingsport Civic Auditorium. Uh, and then October 6th, Tuesday, October 6th at Sleepy Owl Brewery, the Ladies Night uh, Beer and Comedy Show, raising money for the Keep a Breath Foundation. Um, if you guys are listening to us on Podbean, uh, make sure to share us. If you're listening to us on iTunes, because we're on iTunes now, woot. Uh, make sure to like and review and do the whole thing, and maybe we can get on some kind of list or something. Who the hell knows? But uh, we would be much appreciated. Appreciative. Appreciate. Ah, fuck it. Uh, this has gone on too long, uh, like all of my things do, usually. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys very much for listening. Uh, we'll be back next week for another We Are But Men Monday. See, I'm totally going to make it a thing. I swear to you, it's going to be a thing. <laughs>